Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips and I hope you are all having a very happy Easter. I'm about to head off to Easter dinner but I thought I better get this entire vlog together before Easter is actually officially over. I know some people do their Easter dinner on the Monday but all of our Easter celebrations are going to be done tonight. And then it's back to the grind for me where I go back for the last little bit of school. I know I'm calling it the last little bit when there's still a few months left, but it always feels like it just goes by so fast. And before you know it, summer will be here. I am really trying to take advantage of the space of the house that I'm in now because as you guys know, I'm going to be moving into a much smaller space. So as I was filming this, I was like, wow, I think with my next home, I'm really going to run out of space to do big things like this. I don't know if I will be able to do big things like this, but we shall see. This was a solid 48 hours of intense baking, but I am splitting it into two separate vlogs because on the one hand, I was working on all of the stuff for both my niece and nephew's joint birthday party. And then on the other hand, I was working on all the stuff for Easter. Now for Easter, I didn't really have a clear cut plan, but because I had to do all of those other things for the birthday, I decided to just throw in some things here and there and make double batches of things. And by double batches, I really mean triple and quadruple batches. The cakes you see me baking here are actually for the birthday and the cupcakes were for Easter and this was all done on day one which was a pretty relaxing day. On day two I went to the cake store straight away almost in the morning. I spent a hundred dollars on this little shopping trip and I really didn't get that much. Cake supplies have gone up exponentially and there was no white fondant in the store and I didn't have time to go to another store so I ended up having to buy those really really little already pre-dyed fondants but it did end up working. I needed to get started making the ganache because the ganache was going to be used in several different things not only for the cake but also the cupcakes. And of course, I decided to make cakesicles because I did have a lot of leftover cake scraps. This wasn't really in the original plan, but I figured better not to waste and it's one more dessert that I can have on the table. By the way, this is a little bit of a pro tip, but if you accidentally make your cake pop dough a little bit too loose and it's a little bit squishy, not really holding its shape, put it into a cakesicle mold. It's going to work every single time. The only time it doesn't work out is if you're trying to roll a perfect ball because it really won't keep its shape. I found these really great cakesicle sticks. I ran out. They were quite expensive, but I decided they did go with the Easter theme. Originally, I wanted to make bunnies out of these cakesicles, but I always seem to run out of time during these baking adventures and the cake pops are usually the first thing to suffer. Doing big baking projects like this is always all about timing so I do try to make sure that I'm doing multiple things at once. So I did put those into the freezer while I was crumb coating so that I wasn't wasting any time whatsoever. You will see me crumb coating the cake in another baking vlog though. Right here I'm just unmolding the cakesicles and I'm going to then place them in the fridge because I don't want that chocolate to crack. Of course the worst part is when you're slowed down by everything because everything is just a disaster. So so you have to clean in between. I remember when I used to live in a much smaller place and I would do orders and cookies and cake would be everywhere. So when we moved to this other house, it was just so much nicer having all this room. But now I'm going backwards and going back to a similar space, but not doing any orders. So we'll see how this all turns out. When I was washing the dishes, I made sure to put this dough out on the counter just so it can thaw a little bit. Even though it was just in the fridge, it does need time to be out of the fridge so it makes it a lot easier to roll everything out. Sorry for the chaotic movements. I just want to show you how I was working on making that Italian meringue buttercream, cutting out the cookies, baking the cookies, and I was browning butter for cookies as well because I wanted to make my chocolate chip cookies. And I did get all of these cut out and baked, which took quite a while because again, I wasn't just working on Easter sugar cookies. They were more of an afterthought because I had a bunch of other sugar cookies to make for my niece and nephew's birthday. Also half the battle with all of these decorating type things is making sure that you have enough space and moving things around, constantly moving things around so that you are giving yourself enough room to decorate. 
I needed to think up a design for these cupcakes that didn't have too much frosting on top because my family really doesn't like it when there's a lot of frosting. So I decided to dip the cupcakes in the dark chocolate ganache and then roll it in these cookie crumbs that I created that really look like moss when you add in a little bit of green food colorant. And then I just finished off the top with a little bit more buttercream, but not too much. This was a very therapeutic and calm and satisfying process. Highly recommend, but if your cupcakes are a little bit soft or they just came out of the oven, you really want to be very gentle with the way that you press these in. Luckily, I let these rest for a bit because I was doing so many other things, so they were nice and firm so I could firmly place them into those cookie crumbs. I really wanted to place these in the fridge to let them all firm up. I really did, but unfortunately there was just no room in the fridge, but luckily ganache is very good at room temperature as well. So they just weren't as firm for transport as I wanted them, but still good. Moving along to these vanilla cupcakes, I wanted to spice them up a bit by putting some dulce de leche in there. Again, very satisfying piping this in. We had taco night this year for Easter, so I wanted to do something in that vein. So so I decided to fill these up. I was going to make churros originally, but after making all of these other desserts, I was like, I don't want to get out a bunch of oil and deep fry things when I'm doing all this baking. So I decided against that and they were fairly well received. Some of you might be thinking, that's not enough buttercream. There is a hole in the center of your buttercream. Don't worry, I do have a way of fixing that. But the reason is because my family is really, really picky about buttercream. They do not like a whole lot on top. And I'll admit, it looks great having a lot of buttercream on top of your cupcakes, but I certainly don't like that much frosting either. So I really was not that generous with the way that I put that on there, but I knew I was going to fill up the center with these micro mini eggs. I also had some mini macarons that I made not too long ago, added a little mini egg, and then I also added these edible wafer paper butterflies just to give it a little bit of whim and make it look a little bit different from the other ones. I originally was just going to use ganache for this, but it was a little too thin. I should have upped the ratio of chocolate if I wanted to pipe it. So instead what I did was I added the rest of the ganache that I had left over with the leftover Italian meringue buttercream and it whipped up into this beautiful ganache Italian meringue buttercream that was pipeable enough to make these nests. And of course, I generously added on the mini eggs because I love mini eggs and I love it when all desserts have them around Easter. I then tapped a little luster dust mixed with a tiny amount of vodka all over just to give it that added glam. I love when I watch all the footage playback. I can see the day slowly move onward. We were about midday here and Alia actually came over to help me. She is the best for just coming to help me with these random projects. We love it when we can do big, big baking projects that we plan from start to finish, but sometimes I just have these other projects that kind of get in the way, but she also is so great for coming to help me with them. And of course, she's filming her own stuff as well, so definitely be sure to check that out when it is published. One of the worst things about sugar cookie decorating for me is mixing up all of the colors and mixing up the royal icing itself and getting it to the correct consistency. Now, because I had already iced a ton of other sugar cookies for another project, as I had mentioned, Everything was already mixed up for me, so it made this decorating process really easy. Now, I did a lot of heavy airbrushing for my niece and nephew's birthday cookies, so with this, I really wanted to keep it very classic, almost like when I first started learning how to decorate sugar cookies. I wanted to go back to that moment. And while I was doing this, I missed a lot of the footage of Alia getting started on the chocolate chip cookies, but I basically just gave her my recipe and I let her do it. But there was a little bit of a mistake. And this is what's so interesting about baking. I wasn't really keeping an eye on things. The cookie still had those brown butter notes and tasted exactly like my cookies that I normally make, but they were really, really thin and crisp, and I love it when my cookies are really, really chewy. So it was still a good cookie. It was just a completely different cookie experience than I had expected. But I did a little experiment, which I'm going to be bringing to dinner tonight, where I placed a bunch of the cookies into a bag and then I put a piece of bread in there. Now, I know that when I make chewy cookies, this does keep the cookie nice and chewy, but I wasn't sure if it would take a crisp cookie and turn it chewy, but 
Ta-da, it actually did. So I was super happy about that. Back to the sugar cookies. I did a little bit of airbrushing in the center because I already had my airbrush out. And then I decided to keep things relatively simple with some simple swooping piping. At this point, Alia was also dipping all of the cake pops, which I don't know what happened, but I must have been really in the zone because I missed taking all of this footage of her. But again, definitely go and check out her side once it is published. And then she also helped me pack up all of the cupcakes. This was after we had dinner. You can see that everything is pretty much a disaster, but things were coming together. I made these cookie bars a couple of weeks ago, but I actually froze the entire thing all together. And then we let it thaw and then Alia got to cutting it. And I don't know if it's just her pastry chef ways, but she's always so good at getting things really, really nice and even. And this is what it looked like at the end of the day. And of course, the next day though, I had a few more things to do. I went to the birthday party for my niece and nephew this morning and it, it was so chaotic. We went to Chuck E. Cheese and it was just like two hours of uninhibited fun, which is great. But then my kids spent, I think, about 20 minutes at the prize table because, of course, they never just choose, you know, a really high ticket prize. They have a bunch of tickets and then they choose a kind of medium prize and then they have so many tickets left over that it takes them forever. But the reason I'm telling you this little side story is because when I came home, I was absolutely exhausted. I hadn't eaten yet because they were serving pizza at 10 a.m. and pizza just isn't my favorite anyway. So I just decided to have breakfast and once I ate then I fell asleep for like an hour or so and by the time I woke up I was like oh I did most of the baking so there's really not too much to do before Easter dinner but in fact there still was because I had to individually wrap all of those sugar cookies the reason I do that is because when sugar cookies touch other desserts they tend to get ruined really easily and the last baking thing I actually had to do was fill up all of these failed sugar cookies. Now I have a little story about these sugar cookies and why these are even in existence. So originally when I had everything baking all together when I was doing the cupcakes and cakes, I also did the sugar cookies too, but something went wrong. I think I left things sitting together too long and the dough ended up being really, really dry. So I thought that I had forgotten to put the eggs in, but I do think I actually did put the eggs in. Something just got absorbed in a weird way because I left it before mixing it. So this turned out to be a really sticky wet dough so I wouldn't really call it my sugar cookie recipe but it was softer than that a little cakier than that so I decided to turn it into sandwich cookies and bless Alia she was the one that had to roll all of those out with a super sticky dough but it did come together and they were actually pretty tasty. In order to prevent the dulce de leche filling from falling out everywhere because it was kind of warm as well. I did a little dam of ganache and then later on I actually did do some with just the dulce de leche filling. Placed it in the fridge for about 30 minutes while I got ready and it actually stayed together pretty well and as I was watching people bite into them the filling was not cascading out so that was good to know. Whenever I'm putting a dessert spread together, the real trick to this is making sure that everything looks nice and full. I find when things look sparse, people don't actually want to eat it as much. It looks way more enticing when there is way too much. Luckily, I am going to be utilizing this for a lot of people and I did end up sending a bunch of treats with my husband to work as well. I end up taking out those sugar cookies because although it looks really great in there, I did not have the space after I added in the sandwich cookies. Even though I felt like I had been ultra prepared with all of the baking and I had finished making a three-tiered cake as well as an additional 48 sugar cookies, I somehow was still running out of time on this day. So I got some quick shots of all of these delicious treats and then I headed over to my cousin's house because she was hosting Easter. And then I did my grand big setup. And I got to say that after all of these years, I'm doing a lot better at getting things over in a much more secure manner and knowing what to pack and what not to pack. And it really, really cuts down on the stress. 
You may recognize these from my Bridgerton treat box. I didn't put the round ones in the video, but I did make a bunch of round ones because I knew that I would be using them for Easter as well. A whole springtime vibe with these macarons. I have a few people that can only eat gluten-free items, so this is always a great option. And then here are those cakesicles that Alia made that were supposed to be bunny rabbits, but instead they just kind of look like hairy cakesicles. I'm about to head out to my final Easter celebration where I will be bringing some of these treats and I also have way more cookies that I did not show you guys um, because I made a lot. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!